The best way to charge one of these batteries is through solar panels. Doesn't matter if it's those portable ones that we can place on a backyard or on a balcony or even fixed panels. But what if we don't have sun? Then I can just charge with the power plug and we can go up to 1500 watts on this particular battery. A few days ago we had a big blackout here in Portugal and Spain. So if I don't have sunshine, if I don't have my grid working, how can I charge this battery? Taking this to our car, plug it into the car socket and we can charge it in an emergency because usually I always have fuel in my car. Now in my particular car it charges only at 110 watts but this battery accepts up to 800 watts input so if you have a more powerful socket in your car you will be able to charge it now this was the first battery that i did use on the blackout day and at that time i thought it would be something that would be solved in a couple of hours so what i did was to plug in the microwave and heat my lunch and then i did connect my router i did connect one of the tvs and everything was working great but then i did realize that actually the blackout was the whole country and Spain as well and we would be at least one day without complete electricity. So what I did was to change my main solar system with the inverter so that I could charge directly through my panels and then plug in my whole house because my system is an on-grid system not an off-grid and I did turn it into an off-grid that day so I could power the whole house. Honestly I'm not expecting many blackouts here where we live especially those general ones that will take the old country down but sometimes we do have blackouts on the neighborhood or on the city what can we charge for how long and one of these days i'm going to share with you the batteries that i do have and i'm going to share with you what i do feel that it's really important before acquiring one of these this one right over here is the ecoflow delta 3 i've been using it for the past six months or so i did share here on my channels it has one kilowatt hour of capacity but we can add expensive Expansion batteries and go up to five kilowatt hour in the future if we want. It's lightweight, it's easy to carry, it has these four outlets with 1800 watts. This is the EU version but if you are in the US or any other part of the world then you will have sockets according to your region and these here have a maximum output of 1800 watts but it also has a 3600 watts Peak. So if we want to use a device that pushes a little bit more momentarily, it will deal with that. On the back side, we will have the ports for the input. And it's the ideal for running a microwave, a hairdryer, a mini electric stove and similar appliances. It can even run my water heater if I really need to eat up water. It is super silent. This is the only battery that stays here with me permanently. Actually I use it as an UPS here on my office so if anything goes down it will keep my two main systems up and running for a few hours without any issues whatsoever. Now let's do a small power test and noise test and I'm going to turn on this one here which will actually go above the limit which is 1800 and we can see that is on ah, okay it's i'm charging at the same time so i'm going to unplug here at the back and we are only going to discharge the water is boiling so or it's <laughs> it's starting to boil so so it was boiling because i was recording the Portuguese video just a few moments ago now cold water again you can still hear it a little bit but we can hear a little bit of the fan. Now we will be comparing with another unit that I've got here which, which is the loudest one that I've got so that we can compare something really silent with something really noisy. Now let's turn off this one here and let's turn on this uh, toaster here which consumes about 800-900 at this moment 930 hopefully you can see it on screen as well here on the battery 920 something now, this is a kind of power that I do not use on a daily basis like a UPS. My two systems here, which are powered by the Delta 3, never reach more than 300, 400. But if you have even a gaming system where you do push with your GPU 800 or even 900 watts, which I don't believe that you will, I don't hear a single fan, I don't hear nothing. 
and even for sustained times, EcoFlow has been one of the brands that is the most quiet ones. Charge the unit and let's put, let's connect it here at the back. And at this moment, it will detect that it has a plug and it's already charging. So it will start ramping up 500 watts, 950, 1200 watts, 1400 or 1 1.4 kilowatt hour. And there we go. It is set to go up to 1,500, but we can change that. We can just move and say to charge at 500 or 200 or whatever we want. We decide that. Or we can also apply the automatic settings and it will do the best possible to maintain the battery. So this is what we don't hear. There is no fans, there is nothing. The only thing that we hear is on the output side, when we really push it, then we will hear. And let's do it once again. Now, charging and discharging at the same time. Let's turn this one on, which is the most powerful one that I've got here. And this one, there we go. We are charging and discharging at the same time. And I keep on hearing the water more than the fans, but we do hear a fan here on this side. But this one is louder. If I turn it off, it will instantaneously turn off as well, which is an insane setup. If I bring this unit here, which is powered on and at this moment not doing any noise at all, this is one of the factors that we need to have in mind. So if I plug in just the power adapter, this is really not cool. It's not even plugged in to the unit yet, which is crazy. Now, I can plug it into the unit and the crazy thing here is that it doesn't matter if it's plugged in or not, it will always make this noise on this particular unit that I've got here from the Blue Yeti. And this is one system that I can't, as you can imagine, have here as a new PS because I will have this noise and this noise will be noticeable especially when I'm recording videos but even if I didn't record any kind of video I wouldn't be able to be uh, working on any scenario with this noise we just plug it off it's a lot of noise so it, it doesn't make too too much sense now let's do something different this particular unit I don't have something here which is to the limit the limit is 700 watts output this will peak at 900 something like that so it will go down but let's just see let's just here let me turn on the ac output here and now okay so it went down it's okay because this is 700 watt maximum but the sound the noise that it makes now it stopped and if i turn this one off let's turn it on again a lot less power a lot more noise but most important in this particular case is that it doesn't matter if it's a blackout but it's only a break i don't feel that on my devices because it's being protected with the battery now if i need on a critical situation like i did the other day just turn off my systems pick up the battery take it up and that's it and it has 4000 cycles which means that if i charge and discharge every single day it will last me for 10 years more or less while having or retaining a 80% capacity of its original state. We can go up to 5 kilowatt hour and I don't need to invest everything in just one time. I can get this one right over here and then over time add more capacity if I really need to. When we compare to classic and conventional solar systems, usually comparing capacity to capacity, these are higher. In my opinion, and I would love to hear your opinion down below, we are paying for the portability, which when I do purchase, like I do have on my house to feed all the grid, it's a system that we need to have an installer, we need to pay some extras besides the capacity and it stays right over there. Now in this particular case, I can take it to a picnic, I can take it to a barbecue, I can take it to the beach and I can use it as a UPS for my system. But when the time comes, if I need it during a blackout, I just need to unplug, shut down my computers and then I can take it and fit in the microwave and 
what I need. Hopefully the video was helpful to take some of the questions that you guys have been asking. If that was the case, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.